Exciting week I've never been, and I've seen lots of really interesting and surprising things, and I'm really glad to hear today to see Windows 8, and that uh, it's an interesting and hopefully a little surprising thing as well. My name's Steve Scallon. I'm a UX manager at Windows, which work, means I work on the design and usability team. So I'm a product guy, and I'm really proud to show you how Windows 8 is not just the next version of Windows. I've been building Windows for over 10 years now, and I promise you it's not just the next version of Windows. It's about really rethinking what your PC is and what it can do, and how to get that done. You know, we started, we talked about Windows reimagined for Windows 8, and we started that last year right here at CES. We showed you Windows running on ARM. And in September, we had the developer conference and released the developer uh, build, the developer platform, and the developer tools, and got that enormous opportunity started. And just recently, we talked about the store. We demonstrated how the store is going to be a way to uh, stimulate business and economics and the largest developer opportunity that Windows has, has ever created. 1.25 billion machines, 400 million PC shipping this year. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go show, and I'm going to show you a bit about Windows 8. I'm going to do it on three devices. I'm going to do some touch stuff uh, on a touch-based tablet. I'm going to come over here on a laptop that doesn't have touch. Then I'm going to show you some of the development that we've made since our developer preview the last time you got a chance to look at Windows 8. One of the things that I want to make sure you walk away with is to see that Windows 8 is about the enormous opportunity of a touch-based laptop or touch-based tablet. It's about power and the flexibility and the efficiency that the same version of Windows has when I'm using powerful instruments like my, my laptop and my desktop. And it's a complete, no compromise PC. It has all, everything that I show you that's new, it has all the things that I expect from a PC that is essential to my life. So let's start off. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here. This is a this is a developer preview build. This is a touch-based tablet. It's the same hardware that we released at developer. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to slide up from the bottom. One of the first things that you see, our first message is how much Windows 8 reflects you and the things that you care about. How it's a personal expression of yourself. This is my colleague Alice. This is her son Owen. And this is the picture that Alice chose to log on by creating three gestures with this picture. Her picture, her choice, and her gestures. She's going to have a secure and uh, reliable login. So I'm going to go, I'm going to touch the left eye, touch the right eye, I'm just going to swipe across the mouth, and there I am. That was logon. Logon that feels like it's built for touch in my finger, in a way that reflects me. It's like a, a breath of fresh air to log in, right? I've been working in Windows for 10 years, I log in a lot. And I can tell you that feels like it's right for that moment in time. And you see us land right away on the Windows 8 start screen. This is the replacement of the start menu. The start screen is the collection of the applications, the websites, the people uh, that I care about. One of the first things that you're going to notice is how these tiles move and these applications move. And show me information right at this point. I don't have to go anywhere. I don't have to log into anything. I don't have to open anything to know that it's 54 degrees in Las Vegas. I can tell here that I'm getting a news feed update. I can tell here that it's going through my photos. And this helps me stay connected to not just the applications, but the data that they have in a way that makes it feel alive and connected. Because each and every day and each and every moment I log on and it's connected, that information is new. So the start screen is a live activity. And like something like a live, I'm going to want to use it. I'm going to want it to react to how I'm using it in a way that makes it. So I'm going to do, uh, first off, I'm just going to show you this little dot here. That's my finger. I just turned on touch visualization so you can see where my finger is at. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back and forth show you that this, this, like all Metro style UI built on our platform, super responsive, super attached to my finger, super fluid, fast and fluid to use. And I can go from the beginning of my start screen to the end, super quick, super fluid. Okay. Now, uh, I, you can see these are the applications that I care about because they're built, by the way, on our new developer web tech uh, platform, which is HTML5, JavaScript, familiar languages. And uh, like I said, these are the applications I carry out, organized the way that I want them organized. I'll show you a bit more of that later. But I might want to get another one. So I'm going to come over here, I'm going to open the store. What you see in the store is here are applications that have already been developed, again, using the familiar technology of HTML5 and our development kit and JavaScript. These are some of the progress that developers made since the developer conference. And you can see here, uh, already put in the store, a store that feels, uh, again, responsive, like I saw that start screen, responsive, moves with my finger, has the 
categories, the organizations I care about. Again, shows me the information that's important to me, like how much it is, whether it's free, has the categories, like top rated, uh, uh, as you would expect. And I'll just show you, here's Cut the Rope. Cut the Rope's a good example, because this was a, a web-based company with a web-based technology that was able to build a metro style app and do it quickly and efficiently with the familiar languages that they know, using the assets they already have. And one of the first things you're gonna notice in the store UI here, as you'll notice everywhere else, is this a metro style app. And by metro style, we mean that this application gets to decide how to use the space on the screen. This application uses all the pixels on the screen to decide how to display information, things that are important to them, and Windows is sitting in the background, always available and ready, but not taking up that space on the screen. It's, or it's the opportunity of this any style, metro style application, to decide how to present themselves to customers. So, as I said, Windows is already always there. So, I'm just going to swipe in. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to take my hand, I'm just going to pull in from the right, and here's Windows. Always there, always ready for me. The promise of what Windows is, is to help connect you to applications, help connect applications to each other, help to uh, take data and information, move it and search across it the way that you'd want it to. So we see search, share, start, devices, and settings. And I'll go and get in, uh, each of those a bit later. But right now, getting back to that start screen, it's as fast as doing that. So I bit, and there I am, and there I'm back. And like any application, I'm just gonna open eBay, here's another application. This is also a Metro style application, but using, uh, again, using the same technology platform, but eBay deciding, making a decision about how best to prepare its content, how best to use the performance and stability of that platform to create an experience that's right for eBay, that expresses eBay in the way that it wants to. And again, anytime I want to, I'm always just back to where I need to be. So I'm going to switch over to this laptop. You saw me do a lot of things with my hands there, right? You saw me. I'm going to do some of the same thing. I'm going to come over here to this laptop, and uh, this is a this is a, a beautiful Samsung laptop. It's just off the shelf. There's nothing special to it. It's currently available. It's running the same version of Windows, not a different kind of Windows, not Windows 2. And all it has available is not touch at all. I just have the keyboard and the mouse available to me. And I'm going to go walk through and show you how the flexibility of using those things also is reflected in Windows 8. So one of the first things I notice here, I'm on that lock screen, and one of the things that we've given you the ability is here are applications that have data that I care about, that I might want to care about in this state, and I've allowed my mail and my calendar app to tell me that I have things waiting for it there without even having to do anything. What's more efficient in getting information? I didn't have to do anything. But at this moment, I want to log in, and what I have available to me is my powerful hands on this keyboard and this precision mouse I have. I'm just going to hit enter. I'm going to type on the keyboard, and there I am. I'm back to that same start screen. And at this moment, with the devices that are available to me, again, this keyboard and this mouse, just like you would expect, how would I expect to move around Windows 8 in this state when touch isn't available to me? Well, surely I'm just going to pull the mouse, and there's our familiar friend, the scroll bar. It's a powerful uh, Windows thing, and there it is. It's always available to you, like you expect. Again, sort of went away there, so it's not in my face all the time. Right? Metro style is about showing up when you need it. If I move my mouse, there it is. I go down and do that. Of course, the scroll wheel works like I expected to here. I'm just going to scroll the scroll wheel back and forth, fast, fluid, again. We've also said, hey, this is a precision pointing device. Why can't I just take that and just put it at the end of the screen? So here I am, just going left and right, hitting the, 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 the precision that is my mouse pointer, to left, right, moving back and forth. Hey, it feels like that's a way to move around that start screen that feels right for this kind of input, right? But we wanted to make sure when we kept thinking about being as, as efficient as we could. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold down the, again, using the keyboard, I'm going to hold down the control key, do a scroll wheel, and there's all my start screen. Right? We talked about start screen and that developer opportunity and buying applications. You can imagine my start screen is a long and big set of things, right? It's organized like I want. Here are categories, by the way, that I created. This is things I put into, I put these things there, I put these things in play, those are my games. And so, using the, the keyboard and mouse, I can get from the beginning, right to the end, as fast as that. I can get to the end, right to the beginning, as fast as that. I can do all the same things that I should be able, that you would expect to do with that uh, less precise device, my finger with the mouse. I can take this application, I can put it where I want, in the category I want. And again, making sure we're always thinking about being as efficient as possible. I just take that and put it down at the bottom. There it is, right at the end. Take it out at the end. 
back to the bottom. There it is, back to the beginning. So again, feels right for the kind of device I have available to me. Alright, oh by the way, I can also get that. I can take the entire category if I want to and move that around. Right? Creating that start screen that again is important to me in the way that I, I want it to be. Now, here's my back at the start screen. And as you can see, Windows 8 offers complete uh, backward compatibility with Windows 7. It ran in Windows 7, runs in Windows 8, and uh, there are some important applications uh, that are some applications that are important. Here's Microsoft Excel. This is the Excel that I use all the time. This is PowerPoint. I work as part of the design team. PowerPoint's an essential tool for me. I want it in the start menu right beside my new modern or my new Metro style apps that are also important to me. And how would I expect to be able to get, get to Excel? Well, you know, well, I would be able, I would expect to be able to find it and browse to it just like I did in my figure. But I have the keyboard here and I want I want to just be able to do this. So type in. There's, I just type those three letters. You can see we filtered through all the programs on your PC. There's Excel, enter, and that's Excel. That's that's the Excel I know that I love. That's the Excel in the environment that I'm productive with it, right? And this is the desktop that you're familiar with. This is the taskbar, not a kind of taskbar or version of it. This is the same taskbar that you know. So here I can open PowerPoint, I can pin applications, I switch between these things, again, using these precision instruments in these applications that are part of being essential in my everyday life. And I can go back and forth. Everything that's been available to me before is available to me again. I can maximize, minimize, I can snap something to the right. And uh, you know, and all the set again, all those metro style applications are still really easily available to me. Again, I just go back to start. I'm just gonna open a video here. I'm gonna do a little extreme paragliding. One of the things to notice here again, here's a commitment to beautiful HTML5. This is a 16 by 9 app running in HD. It takes up every pixel on the screen, looks beautiful. But in my work, I want to be able to know that I can get to the things that are important to me. So one of one of the tools that I use, I, I don't know everybody doesn't do it, all tabs still important to me. Look, here I'm back in PowerPoint. Right? Back and forth. I want that video again. There, I'm back to the video. I want Excel. Those things are always available to me. Because that's what we know is essential in people's lives. Now, I'm going to show you a scenario here that's actually important to me. I hope my boss isn't around. So I'm a transplanted Canadian, and I live in Seattle because I'm part of the product team. And uh, every morning I need my hockey fix. Seattle doesn't have a hockey team. So I start my every day by using my modern applications in the most efficient way that I can, which is to put them right beside my the other applications that are important to me in my design like, like PowerPoint. So here what I'm going to do, uh, okay, that video is available to me. I'm going to take my mouse, by the way. I'm just going to put it up in the top left corner. I'm just going to go up here. Again, precision device. I'll take that, throw it up there in the top left. Look, there's that video. Right? There's that application. I can put it here, I can put it there. I'm going to snap this there. So you need to picture this. This is my morning, each morning. This is ESPN. This is showing me all my hockey highlights from the night before. Now, there's a lot of teams I'm not a fan of. I'm from Toronto, so Toronto, uh, greatest hockey team ever. They're going to take it this year. I know it's been 65. When it gets to Toronto, I'm going to make that bigger. So I really want to see all the Toronto highlights I can. And when I'm done with Toronto and I'm watching whether they lost or not, I'm going to put that back. Do that. There's my desktop. By the way, it's all of the desktop again. It's all the taskbar. Okay. There's a there's a view of Windows that you not. I snap these two apps together. They're PowerPoint. And when I'm done with my hockey highlights, or when my boss shows up in the morning, I'm just gonna grab that and just make it go away. Right? And that desktop always available. To me. So it's not either or. The most efficient thing, the most efficient multitasking is just looking. Right? So I don't even have to do anything, and I can get that best of both worlds working together the way that's essential in my life. All right, I'm gonna go over here.